Coming up on First at Four, workers at one Southern Kentucky call center go on strike as they demand better pay. And one member of a popular rap group is shot and killed in Houston, Texas. Yes, we have some showers on the way, but also potentially record-breaking warm weather. Breakdown on that next is First at Four starts right now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Huntsley. First at four, workers at a business in London went on strike earlier this morning demanding better pay and better working conditions. WIMT's Dakota Maker has talked with one worker who says he's just hoping to see improvements in the workplace. Maximus call center workers across the nation went on strike Tuesday. The call center contracts with the federal government, serving Affordable Care Act and Medicare patients. Workers want to see increased wages Clinton Sams tells me they are paid $15 an hour. They want to see the company increase their pay to $25 an hour. For the most part, it can just simply be stress. It can be any number of just like the hazards of the work site. Um, you know, of course, we have all the standard concerns of any corporate office. Workers say they see an increase in callers during open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act, adding to the workload. But they say some callers take frustrations out on call center staff. It is again about living wages, living standards, and just you know that greater peace of mind for us, knowing that we're doing a good job for people that do need this service. Hoping to see a change sooner rather than later. In London, Dakota Maker, WYMT Mountain News. A Maximus spokesperson tells us employees who work eight hours get two 15-minute rest breaks in addition to their half-hour lunch break. As cooler weather eventually moves in, a common concern for families is heating their home. With prices continuing to climb, paying for the energy bill could be tough. But community action agencies across the state of Kentucky can help through a state-funded program called LIHEAP, which stands for Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. Through a contract with the state of Kentucky, uh, the program has two components, subsidy and crisis. Subsidy is the first component that we will begin operating on November the 7th. And basically everyone that applies that's eligible is approved during subsidy. To apply for LIHEAP assistance, you can visit your local community action agency. Registration begins on November 7th and ends on December 16th. A plan several years in the making has now come to fruition for the Floyd County Sheriff's Office. Eight officers were sworn in as school resource officers for Floyd County Schools today. And with the help of the Prestonsburg Police Department, there is an SRO at every school in the county. Some of the officers say this role is a change of pace for them, but they feel honored to serve Floyd County in this way. Yeah, I've already spoke to a lot of parents that were tickled to death that we were already there. Uh, it was pretty surprising that we actually was able to get on board that quick. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of proud of the community to, you know, and, and the higher ups in these agencies to push us along a little faster. Uh, it's, it's something that's important, it's needed. A few members with the Lifeguard Ambulance Service were also sworn in today. They are partnering with the Floyd County Sheriff's Office to train officers on treating rapid injuries and other skills they would need to uh, assess a medical emergency. And continuing to watch clouds work through the region this afternoon. Not dissimilar to where we were yesterday, except it's a little drier around the region. We don't have quite as much moisture to bring us a few of those showers. But a little bit of drizzle has not been out of the question as we've gone through today. I'm looking at a couple of lens flares in the middle of that uh, image uh, from the Mountain Parkway at Slade, meaning we may be breaking a little bit of sunshine out there. Mid-60s there in Slade throughout the region. We remain overcast with those upper 50s to low 60s region-wide. Winds are calm, dew points are a little low, so that's why we're not seeing a ton of moisture out there. A little bit 60s, just like yesterday. Even a few upper 50s kind of hanging around there for us. You see a few breaks in the clouds, but most of all, we're watching yesterday's system continue to push out, but we've got another system heading our way that may not bring us a ton of shower activity, but it will bring us more clouds heading into tomorrow. For tonight, mostly cloudy skies continue. Upper 40s, maybe a few breaks in the clouds, but many of us do stay socked in. The very latest, though, on when we could see a return to some more spring-like weather, that's in a few minutes. Steve? All right, thank you very much.
Well, families of the 17 people killed in the 2018 school massacre in Parkland, Florida, were able to directly speak to the shooter today. Nicholas Cruz also heard from people he wounded in the first of a two-day sentencing hearing. Most expressed rage that he did not receive the death penalty. CBS's Christian Benavidez is at the courthouse in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Families of the students and staff killed at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School unleashed their rage on gunman Nicholas Cruz. And Parkland murder, I hope your maker sends you directly to hell to burn for the rest of your eternity. Many of the families and survivors testified during the penalty trial, but were only allowed to describe what happened and their grief. Tuesday, they could address Cruz directly. We hope that you, the monster who did this to our son, endure a painful existence in your remaining days. Teacher Stacy LaPelle says she came within 20 feet of Cruz before she was able to close her classroom door, saving her students. Because of you, I will never feel safe again. After the families and survivors give their statements, the judge will formally impose the jury's sentence to life in prison without parole. Most who spoke expressed disgust. Cruz didn't get the death penalty. Shameful despicable behavior by you people. Patricia Oliver, who lost her son Joaquin, railed against the defense attorneys who'd argued their clients should be spared because of his mother's drug and alcohol abuse while pregnant, and he never got the help he needed. Karma will eventually catch up to you all. Some families want the state's law changed so jurors do not have to be unanimous on the death penalty. In this case, three of the 12 jurors voted against it. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Fort Lauderdale. Cruz's attorneys say he is not expected to speak. A New York corrections officer who was stabbed in the head roughly 15 times by an inmate is now conscious and undergoing tests. It's unclear what led to the attack at Rikers Island yesterday. Authorities say the officer was working in the protective custody unit when the incident happened. In a statement, they called it an unprovoked, heinous, and callous attack while the officer was just doing his job. Neither the officer or the reported assailant are being identified at this time. A member of the Grammy-nominated hip-hop trio Migos was shot to death in an early morning shooting following a party in Houston. A representative for the 28-year-old rapper known as Takeoff confirmed his death to the Associated Press. CBS's Elise Preston reports. Police in Houston say they are in the early stages of their investigation into a deadly shooting outside a bowling alley overnight that killed a member of the Atlanta hip-hop group Migos. We're looking for the public's help or anybody who was at the party or at the event that witnessed this. A representative for the 28-year-old rapper known as Takeoff confirmed his death to the Associated Press. Born Kirshnik Kari Ball, he was a member of Migos, along with his cousin Offset and his uncle Quavo. They had a string of Billboard hits, including Versace, which was ranked as one of the 50 best songs of 2013 by Spin Magazine. Both Takeoff and Quavo were at a private party. A witness says as Takeoff left, a fight started, and then there were gunshots. Police are reviewing surveillance video in the area as they search for the shooter. Elise Preston, CBS News. Police say security guards who were in the area heard the shooting but did not see who did it. Yesterday, a former Boy Scout leader pleaded guilty to sexually abusing two boys in Michigan more than 20 years ago. Mark Chapman could spend decades behind bars. He became the first person charged after the Boy Scouts of America launched an investigation of possible sexual abuse of scouts dating back years. Prosecutors initially charged Chapman with nearly a dozen counts of sexual abuse. He pleaded guilty to just one count of first and second degree criminal sexual conduct. He also agreed to register as a sex offender and have electronic monitoring for the rest of his life. A judge will sentence Chapman in December. Coming up on First at Four, thousands are trapped inside a Disney resort in Shanghai in the midst of a COVID lockdown. And parts of Europe witness record-breaking warmth in the month of October. And around the mountains, we're keeping it rather mild as we head for the second half of this work week. Those details coming up after this. 
In the general election, no...